In this sh very short video, we're going to try and understand that light waves are transverse waves which can be diffracted. Okay, we've covered reflection and refraction in other videos, and this one the focus is on diffraction. So let's think first of all, key question: what is diffraction? Now let's let's look at a scenario. Now we've got a scenario here where a series of waves okay are approaching a gap. Here's a gap here and here's a series of waves of constant wavelength. Now what what happens? Well, think about this, okay? All waves diffract. That means all waves spread out as they pass through a gap or around an object. So as they come through the gap, they're going to diffract. The amount of diffraction depends upon the size of the gap in relation to the wavelength. So here's a wavelength here, okay? And it's the relationship between this wavelength here and this size here that dictates the amount of diffraction. I'll show you an example in just a moment. Okay, now the longer the wavelength, i.e., the more spread out these are, or the narrower the gap, i.e., the closer these are, the more the wave spreads out. Let's have a look now at example. In this one here, we've got a pretty wide gap. So the gap here is pretty wide compared to the wavelength. So the gap is much wider than the wavelength then there is very little diffraction. In fact, you can barely see any change at all in these waves. This is what happens if we narrow the gap. Now here we narrow the gap. This is much smaller. Okay, It's just a bit wider than the wavelength here. There is diffraction. You can see it here, but it's only occurring at the edges. This, this is diffraction. It's this slowing down or bending slightly here, isn't it? But the middle bit here passes through unaffected. Now what happens if we narrow the gap even further? Let's narrow the gap here. Now the wavelength of these here is virtually the same as the gap size there. And you can see here we've got maximum diffraction, okay? It's all being diffracted or affected by passing through that gap. Okay? So the narrowness of the gap depends on the wave in question. So we've got a very narrow gap here, it depends on the wavelength here, doesn't it? Obviously. Obvious point that. Uh, but we can say as a conclusion to this that wider gaps, the bigger the gap here produce less diffraction. But again, it all depends, doesn't it, upon the wavelength here. Now, let's think about um, light. Now, light, hmm, now light has got very small wavelength. It's about 0 0.0005 millimeters. That is a very, very tiny wavelength. Okay, and so therefore, as we've just shown in the previous um, few clips, it can only be diffracted when there's a really, really small gap. So what can we use for that? Well, we use something called a diffraction grating. Now this thing here, highly, highly magnified, is a diffraction grating. Now think, if this is going to cause um, diffraction, these gaps here have got to be similar to the wavelength of light. So 0 0.0005 millimeters is the distance between these gaps here. And when that happens, you get diffraction of the light and when white light passes through gaps in diffraction grating different wavelengths of color light you know blue red yellow all those are all diffracted by different amounts so we get this separation of the colors this separation of colors there so as the light comes in here as white light comes in here it gets diffracted and it splits up into all the colors we see here now this is very very important diffraction creates a spectrum of different color light which can be used by astronomers to actually analyze light coming from stars. So there's a really, really practical use there of diffraction. Astronomers will use it, analyze light coming from stars. And as we'll see in another video, that's very important, particularly things like redshift. Okay, so hopefully in a short video, you now understand what we mean by the term diffracted or diffraction. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for listening to me, and I'll say bye-bye for now.